All right, Shalom. First off, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shah, by Hashem Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And this is Shir Shalom to all the Akim out here that's doing and pushing the work in truth and in sincerity. Okay. Um, I want to go in on uh, the word Ponzi scheme and how America is nothing but a big Ponzi scheme. Okay. Um, I'm going to go in on uh, the man uh, Ponzi or where the name Ponzi comes from, okay? But um, before I do that, you know, I just wanted to, to, you know, reference, okay, the video that me and the brother from uh, DC, Kasap, okay, who's uh, pictured in the video, Okay, me and him had did a video on the history of the bar on the barter system and credit. Okay, and it's funny that both of our um our videos have the same uh views, okay, and the same uh likes or whatever. But um we went into the history on the barter system and credit, and I'm gonna just touch in on some things as far as the Ponzi scheme. Okay, which it goes to to credit, okay, and uh, bartering, but um, I'm gonna get this Nahum three and one, okay. Woe to the bloody city, which woe means destruction. It is all full of lie. It is all full of lies, okay. It's a lot of lies. Like the 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 money system is nothing but a lie, okay. And robbery. The prey departeth not. Okay, and um, America is getting um, rich off of extortion people. Okay, um, it's the word extortion, okay, or extors extortioner is a person who gets money from another by using force or threats. Okay, and you got these uh, banks, okay. They, uh, you go get a loan from a bank and they, um, you know, they threaten you if you don't have that money. Okay, well, you got to have collateral and we'll take whatever you have, you know, if you don't pay what you owe. Okay. So with that said, I want to get in touch up on some of the things, okay, about banking. Okay. It's banking 101. Money creation from the Templars, I mean the Knights Templars, which we went into on this video, okay, to Wall Street. The origin of bank credit is money. Okay. Now uh it said it was, this is a good article. I'll you know I'm gonna skim through it, okay, and I'm gonna post it. In the um in the description box okay now it says during the middle ages from about 1100 to 1300 a.d the knights templar and a.d means anno domini it says the knights templar had established their castles throughout europe as a safe place to store gold and silver coins along with other valuables. Sound like America, right? The Templars helped to fa finance the Crusades. And with the Pope's blessings, they became a fav favorite charity for millions of Christians. According to a timeline of the Order of the Knights Templars, compiled by the mid medieval combat society, the Templars began using letters of credit in 1150. With the confidence of the public supporting them and with the creative use of letters of credit, which is IOUs, and notes, they established a vast credit lending system that soon left them in possession of large vineyard holding, farmlands, buildings, and other property throughout Europe. Okay? And this all goes into America. Okay, being a Ponzi scheme. Now, I'm going to get this scripture and I'm going to go back into the article and I'm going to go, 
you know, with the spirit, okay, it's Exodus 22 and 25. If you lend money to any of my people that is poor by you, which oh, pretty much most of Israel is poor, okay, thou shalt not be to him as an usurer, neither shalt thou lay upon him usury, okay? Uh, see with the word usury, okay? Nashak, okay? Which that means interest, charging them interest, interest on a debt, okay? So the banks aren't supposed to, um, you know, you need a house. You, you want to own your house. Okay. The banks aren't supposed to uh, be charging you interest just to buy a house. Okay. First off, we're not supposed to be paying for, for rent or, or to be living in, um, in this country, you know. But that's just the way that the so-called white man has a side up. Okay. They're extortion. They're extortion. If you don't pay that rent. Which more often than not, when you when you paying that rent for a building, okay, like let's say the rent is a thousand dollars a month, the mortgage for that house could be about three hundred, four hundred dollars, depending on what you have. Okay? So that person who, who owns that spot could be making triple off of you renting it, okay, then they're actually paying for it. Okay? So um that's what what happens when you're renting, okay? But it says you should not, you know, um charge them usury, okay, or or, or interest, okay? Now I'm gonna read this and I'm gonna go back into the, the article, okay, but I just wanted to get this first I'm gonna get uh what a Ponzi scheme is, okay? Ponzi scheme, a form of fraud in which belief in the success of a non-existent enterprise is fostered by the payment of quick returns to the first investors from money invested by later investors. Okay? So this is, when you hear about the word Ponzi scheme, okay, just know it's fraud. When that goes back to... Um, Nahum 3 and 1, okay, it's all about lies and robbery, okay, and now I'm a, it's all going to tie in when I read more of this article, okay, so that's the Ponzi scheme, a non-existent enterprise, the, which the belief in the, in the success of a non-existent enterprise is fostered by the, by the payment of quick returns to the first investors from money invested by later investors. Okay? So, this is where the word Ponzi comes from. From a guy named Charles Ponzi. Okay? And, um, notice it says, was an Italian swindler, right? You see what the word swindle, swindler means. Swindlers are scammers who con people to make a buck. Unfortunately, there are many types of people in the world who will try to get your money. Somewhere between a used car salesman and an outright thief is a swindler. Swindler, someone who lies to get your money. Something, sometimes by suggesting you invest in something phony. Okay, you don't have to to, to go buy a house. Okay, but if you don't buy a house, you you paying that rent, thousand dollar rent or whatever, when the mortgage of that house is way cheaper than what you're paying. Okay, now Charles Ponzi was an Italian swindler and con artist in the U.S. and Canada. Right, his aliases include Char Charles Ponzi, Carlo, and Charles P. Bianchi. Born and raised in Italy. He became came known in the early 1920s as a swindler in North America for his money-making scheme. He promised clients a 50% profit within 45 days or, or a thousand profit 
percent profit within 90 days by buying discounted postal reply coupons in other countries and redeeming them at face value in the United States is a form of arbitrage. Okay? So, in reality, Ponzi was paying earlier investors using the investments of later investors. While this type of fraudulent investment scheme was not originally invented by Ponzi, it became so identified with him that it is now referred to as a Ponzi scheme. His scheme ran for over a year before it collapsed, costing investors $20 million. Okay? So, this is where... Uh, he wasn't the first uh, person. Okay? This is another swindler. Okay? Name's Charles DeVille Wells. Okay? Sub subsequently, uh, he was... Often referred to, especially in the press, as Monte Carlo Wells. He was also a fraud, fraud, fraudist, fraudster who used several aliases and who served four prison sentences, two in Britain and two in France. He was prob possibly the first criminal to set up a Ponzi scheme predating the swindles of Charles Ponzi himself by 10 years. And this is, he's not the first criminal, okay, to set up a Ponzi scheme. Okay, uh, this is um, from the article, okay, uh, BBC, the warrior monks who invented banking, okay, and we brought this out in the video, okay, but I'm going to bring it, bring out this point again, okay, it says sophisticated exchange, but at this particular fair gossip, gossip was starting to spread about an Italian merchant who was there and making a fortune. Charles Ponzi was an Italian swindler. He brought, he bought and sold nothing. All he had was a desk and an inkstand. Day after day, he sat there receiving other merchants and signing their pieces of paper and somehow becoming very rich. The locals were very suspicious, but to an international elite of Europe's great merchant houses, his activities were perfectly legitimate he was buying and selling debt and in, in doing so he was creating an creating enormous economic value okay that's what a market does a, you know buying and selling debt okay continuing on okay let me get a scripture uh Proverbs 22 and 7. The root rich rules over the poor. And that's what, what's going on in America. The rich is ruling over the poor. And the borrower is servant to the lender. Okay? Because it's all just the Ponzi scheme. America. Okay? Going back into the article. Okay? It says, By 1150... The order's original mission of guarding pilgrims had changed into a mission of guarding their valuables through an innovative way of issuing letters of credit, an early precursor of modern baking. Pilgrims would visit a Templar house in their home country, depositing their deeds and valuables. The Templars would then give them a letter which would describe their holdings Modern scholars have stated that the letters were encrypted with a cipher alphabet based on the Maltese cross. However, there is some disagreement on this, and it is possible that the code system was introduced later and not something used by the medieval Templars themselves. While traveling, the, the pilgrims could present the letter to other Templars along, along the way to withdraw funds from their accounts. This kept the pilgrims safe since they were not carrying valuables and further increased the power of the Templars. Okay? Same way you got a credit card. Okay? Go to another uh, area. Okay? And you can use that credit card. Okay? And and the, the, the company that you go through that to use for that credit card, they, uh, they get money. Okay? From off of that. Okay? Um... Sometimes you got to use your own money to, to get a credit card, okay? 
The Knights' involvement in banking grew over time into a new basis for money as Templars became increasingly involved in banking activities. One indication of their powerful political connections is that the Templars' involvement in usury did not lend, lead to more controversy within the order and the church at large. Officially, the idea of lending money in return for interest was forbidden by the church. Okay? <laughs> it, it was forbidden, but it still is, man. Okay? But the order sidestepped this with clever loopholes such as a stipulation that the Templars retained the rights to the production of mortgage property. Or as one Templar researcher put it, since they weren't allowed to charge interest, they charged rent instead. <laughs> you know, so that just proves what I just said, you know. And they'll take what you what you have, okay, if you don't if you don't uh pay your your um your uh money. Okay. Uh, there's something else that I was reading in this uh, article. Okay, um, about how America uh does things. Okay, like I said, I'm gonna put this into the the uh, description box. Okay. Um, yeah, here we go. Cash. Coins and currency have been replaced by digital dollars, okay? Because this goes into the Ponzi scheme. Today, the U.S. monetary system, originally founded in 1792, was based on gold and silver. It is now primarily based on digital money that is stored in the hard drives of banks' computers. So, let's say an EMP hat. Okay, that go your that go your uh <laughs> your money right there. Okay, it says and to a lesser extent on paper currency and cash. Cash compri comprises less than five percent of our money supply. Okay, so cash is only five percent of the money supply. Okay, and the balance of what we use is money. The other ninety five percent or more is cashless. This is a cashless society. Okay, and I might put that into uh into the topic, okay? But um basically the money that you see out here is just five percent of what, what is really um money, okay? It says uh the cashless money system we use today is basically a record keeping system of numbers called dollars computers have replaced the handwritten bookkeeping system that the templars used as well as banks prior to the 20th century today today's modern banks create money by writing checks and adding a di di adding digital dollars to a borrower's bank account the use of credit cards creates new digital dollars every time a borrower's a borrower's buys a product with a credit card the use of credit cards create new digital dollars every time a borrowers a borrower buys a product with a credit card okay it goes back to the Knights Templar and uh, you know even what Ponzi was doing okay it says big banks lend credit with less than five cents in cash for every dot every dollar of credit they loan strange as it may sound 95 percent of the assets that back up the credit card transaction are the borrower's own promise to repay the credit borrowed when the card is used once created credit card digital dollars are then transferred to another bank account usually a merchant Debit cards, unlike credit cards, do not create new digital dollars, but simply transfer digital dollars is a bookkeeping entry from one account to another. Okay, the first United States Bank, okay, 1791, the first United States Bank founded in 1791 issued notes based on the Rothschild model used at the Bank of England. Okay. 
these are people who, who own, okay, own you. You know? They basically own you. America is nothing but a Ponzi scheme, okay, which is really just a Rothschild scheme, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, you know, and all the other banking families, okay? So, um, I'm going to keep going over some scriptures. Uh, Galatians 6 and 7. Be not deceived. Yahweh by some y'all's sides not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that he also shall reap. Okay? And this is something that these bankers done sold. Okay? Because America is just ruled by banks, man. At the end of the day. Okay? And the so-called white man cannot be saved. You know, because the, the the shit that they're doing nowadays, okay, America is going to be destroyed, okay? Like I said, woe to the bloody city. This is how America got rich, okay? Amos 9 and 8, okay? Uh, Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, Save the Lord. It's talking about the Israelites, okay? But the Edomites, no, no salvation for you. Okay, Luke 16 and 11. If therefore you have not been faithful and unrighteous mammon, okay? Mammon, okay? Mam Mamonos, Mamonos. Strong's G, 3126. Mamonos. Mamonas. Okay, and that is treasures or riches where it is pers pers personified and opposed to God. Okay, of child D origin, confidence, wealth, personified, avarice, mammon. Okay, and it says of child D origin, one of the scriptures that comes to mind is uh, Habakkuk 1. And uh, six for lo, uh, Habakkuk one and five. Behold, you among the heathen, and regard, wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days which you will not believe, though it be told you. For lo, I will raise up the Chaldeans, okay, and the modern Chaldeans are the so-called white man, okay, that bitter and hasty nation which will march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. Okay, and this all ties into the lessons, man. Okay, so the scripture, the definition of ma Mama Nas, okay, it said Chaldean origin, okay, and it says in Luke 16 and 11, if, if therefore you have not been faithful in unrighteous uh, riches or money, treasure, who will commit to your trust the true riches okay so so we can't trust the so-called white man okay or america with this unrighteous money so why would the lord trust them with some real with some real riches okay that's why america has to be destroyed okay but with that lord willing this was edifying i want to say shalom till next time